Milk and cereal. Milk and cereal. Milk and cereal. Cereal and milk. Milk and cereal. Cereal, cereal. Milk and cereal. Cereal and milk. Cereal today is America's most popular breakfast item. It's been around for many generations now, and it is used worldwide. It clutters the pantries of many, and we love it. Yet we somehow don't know a whole lot about the history of cereal. If you would have lived 150 years ago, for breakfast you would have eaten pork, chicken, or some kind of other meat. Um, this actually may sound advertising to you, but back then it was really healthy for you because they were eating you constantly for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and it was really, there was a lot of colon cancer, and it was just horrible for the health, so it wasn't good for them at all. Then Americans begin to push for more healthful substitutions. That's when Dr. James Caleb Jackson, who operated the Dansville Sanitarium in New York, launched Granula, which is now known today as Great Nuts. Uh, what we know from today that granola was absolutely horrible. Uh, you had to soak it over night to eat it, and even then it didn't taste very good at all, so I really don't think it caught on at all. A patron of Dr. Jackson, Ellen G. White, was a woman who was said to have had a vision from God that meat was not good for humans. Dr. Kellogg, a skilled surgeon, was a new member of Ellen G. White's recently found religion, Seventh-day Adventism. He was devoted to finding and creating a healthy food for his patients. He had created an oat biscuit, which he too called granula. Um, when word of this actually got back to Mr. Jackson, he was very angry indeed, and he actually decided to sue Mr. Kellogg for title infringement. Thus, Granula became what we know today as granola. Then it wasn't long before Will Keith Kellogg, John Kellogg's brother, got in on the action. One of the foods they were trying to invent was to run boiled wheat through a roller. After they would roll it, they would then roast it and grind it into a type of meal. However, one night they had left a batch of boiled wheat out. Not wanting to waste the food, they ran the stale wheat through the rollers anyways, and what came out surprised them. Instead of the wheat coming out as one sheet, it had come out as several flakes. They toasted the flakes and served them to their patients, and immediate success took place. Now after this initial discovery, uh, Will had created cornflakes, and he tried to persuade John to sell them to local grocers, but uh, John refused, saying that it would compromise his medical career or cause him to look undistinguished. And, uh, but eventually Will bought out his brother's portion, and he um, created his own company, and rightfully named it the Cattle Company. The next pioneer in cereal was Charles William Post. Charles himself was staying at the Battle Creek Sanitarium when he first got interested in creating health food. He was intrigued by the cereals they were offering and he too started his own company and called it Post. Cereal is today's main breakfast food and people don't just eat it for breakfast either. It's eaten at dinner time, snacks, lunch. It has had a major role in better health and it has easily conformed to our on-the-go lifestyle with cereal bars and a variety of other unique inventions. And now plays a major role in weight loss. And that's a bowl of cereal. Wonderful dimension of thought. Yay!